Now I'll go over the process of adapting your design to an Altera FPGA board. The examples we've looked at so far have had a top-level module called System, which contains two input ports and an output port. These ports don't correspond to any real physical object. They're abstract. To get our design working on the Altera board, we need to interface with real physical components on the board. We do this by instantiating our system module and a special module we'll call System DE2 after the name of the Altera DE2-115 boards. The port names of System DE2 will be specific keywords that Cordis uses for the components of the Altera board. The Altera board has 18 switches. Port SW is a multi-bit port with each bit corresponding to a switch. You can reference individual switches or a range of switches. The board also has 18 red LEDs. Port LEDR is the multi-bit port for these. Same thing for the green LEDs. There's eight of them, and the port is LEDG. These four buttons here are referenced individually. These are key 0, key 1, key 2, and key 3. And up here are the hex digits. Each digit is made up of seven segments that can light up. Each digit has its own multi-bit port, and they're labeled hex 0 through hex 7. The ports are seven bits, with each bit corresponding to one of the segments. There are obviously a lot more components on the board, but you won't have to worry about those for a while. Let's use the first two switches as the input for system, and since the output is only one bit, we'll just have it light up one of the green LEDs. So I'll declare the first two switches as an input port like this. This is the syntax you have to use when you declare multi-bit ports, with the bit range in brackets right before the port name. The numbers are just the most significant bit and least significant bit in the range. Alright, so we'll also have the red LEDs above the switches light up when the switches are on. This is a good thing to do in general because it makes it easier to see which switches are on. I'll declare the first two LEDs as an output port. And then we only need one green LED, so the endpoints of the range will both be zero. So then, all we really have to do is create an instance of system and connect the system DE2 ports to the system ports which has input system A and system B, and output system out. We'll have the first switch, switch 0, as system A. Referencing an individual bit is the same syntax as referencing a specific index of an array in C. Just put the bit in brackets after the port. And you can actually do this with a bit range as well. And we'll hook up switch 1 to system B, and LEDG to system out. Since we only declared LEDG as one bit, we don't need to specify a bit. Oh, and I'll assign the red LEDs to match the value of the switches. When you use an assigned statement with multi-bit ports like this, the least significant bit of the output becomes the least significant bit of the input, and the more significant bits line up accordingly. Now, in order to actually use these port names for the Altera board, we have to import a pin assignment file that tells Cordis what parts of the board correspond to these names. You need a file called de2115pinassignments.csv and you can find it on Sakai in the Resources section. Once you've downloaded it, go to the Assignments tab and click Import Assignments. Then just select the file and click OK. This only needs to be done once for each project. Lastly, just make sure to set System D2 as the top-level module. And now you can compile the project. In the next video, I'll show you how to put your compiled design on the Altera DE2 board.